Showdown. I'm Jason Gilbo, J Gilbo 11. With me is Russell Clay at Russell J Clay. Taking a look at pitching on tonight's DraftKings and FanDuel slates. Uh, 15 games. Um, first time in a while, I feel like we have actually a wide range of options, really from top to bottom. Yeah, there is some really strong pitching at the top, but then it doesn't take long before you're like, ooh, okay. We, we got some matchups to exploit here. Yeah, we definitely do. I mean, you look at a lot of these guys' pricing. I mean, relatively similar from both sites as far as where they land in the in the pool. Uh, first game here, you got Astros and Pirates. Yvonne Nova versus Joe Musgrove. Obviously, Musgrove coming off one of his poor starts to the season. I mean, really his only one. Um, but, I, I mean, against a tough offense in Baltimore in a bad ballpark, kind of expected. I mean, you can't fault him for that blow up. But I, I like him in today's matchup. Uh, going to face a ton of righties in that Pittsburgh lineup in a pretty friendly PNC park. Yeah, I, I you um, mentioned him to me. He wasn't really on my radar, but after yesterday's performance with the Pirates, I just have no confidence in them going forward. And uh, Musgrove again, that one bad start against Baltimore, who kind of just had one of their good days against him. Um, I, I think he's definitely worth a tournament shot once again, especially at that, that price. Um I think we can fire away with him pretty comfortably in tournaments. Uh, Cash, just obviously not there because of the volatility of this lineup. But um, overall, I, I like that play. Yeah, I mean, look at the Pirates. I mean, 21% strikeout rate against righties, uh, 21st in Woba. Um, I mean, Musgrove does have that strikeout upside. I mean, he's he's missing bats, 9.6 swing strike percentage. Um, and, and he doesn't walk a lot of guys, which is nice. So it's something that he does, you know, get through innings rather quickly, and, and you do got to like that. Definitely. Uh, as far as Nova goes on the other side, uh, he's a guy who I'm just kind of lo- overlooking on this slate. I don't feel the real need to um, use him. Well, I do think he's going to be a better pitcher in Pittsburgh. I don't think it's going to come in this start. Yeah, again, switching from um, where he was to where he is now, I think that'll definitely shift things in a positive direction. But I still do think there's a little home run proneness, um, some some nice power bats in that uh, Astros lineup, obviously. So something to look at at least. Not not for pitching, of course. No, definitely not. Uh, Nationals and Orioles next here, Reynaldo Lopez versus Kevin Gossman. Um, obviously, two kind of the cheaper arms. Lopez coming off a, a pretty solid start. Gossman, obviously – been rolling through of late, been pitching better. Um, do I think these guys could possibly have a quality start? Sure. Um, on a 15-game slate, I just they don't register for me as why I'd really use them in comparison to the guys around them. I'm not in. I'm not in on either of these guys. I don't I don't think you need to. Um, obviously, reverse splits for Gossman, kind of a positive indicator um, for the initial sort of surge of this Nationals lineup, but they have Trey Turner, Jason Worth, and, and Wilson Ramos sitting right there as well. So, yeah, not not something I'm looking to look at here. No, I don't think so either. Uh, next one here, you got the Angels and Blue Jays in the Rogers Center. Rogers Center. Uh, R.A. Dickey versus Tyler Skaggs. Um, for me, I mean, I, I can't really get behind either of these guys either. I mean, I know the Angels' offense against righties isn't really that great, but um, I, I just never feel comfortable rostering Dickey really in any format, uh, even GPPs where he's probably the only one where you'd use him there. Um, and Skaggs. Skaggs is a little bit off for me. I mean, he's not missing a lot of bats over his last few starts. I, I want to like Skaggs more than I do. Um, I think generally speaking in this matchup, it's not a good one. So I, I think you you avoid other than deep tournaments. But we have obviously seen some upside in this offense. So I, I'm kind of in for for a deep, deep tournament play, but not unless you're playing over 10 lineups. Yeah, I think that's the case. I mean, as you mentioned, it's just kind of he doesn't register on really the first five to eight if you're ranking no, him, uh, not, not in really. play really. Even even with price considered. Yeah, and as far as the is Dickey, I mean, um, on DraftKings, uh, obviously there is just a lot of base runners that could be there. I mean, a couple of the Angels do have some decent success, which I do give and take into account a little bit against knuckleballers. Yeah, I like that price, but again, this is sort of a desperation game where you're like, well, the Angels do stink, but no. 15 Not games late. Yeah. yeah, no, I don't yeah. think so. Uh, Red Sox and Rays, Chris Archer versus Clay Buchholz. Um, Archer, fairly cheap. Uh, he's a guy who's been lit up by Boston this year, but he's certainly pitching better. Um, I still don't think I can go down that road with the way Boston's swinging the bat right now. Um, I mean, he's given up 
pretty much Archer's given up an earned run per inning against Boston this year in 16 innings. So uh, the strikeout rate has obviously been down a little bit. Um, I can't get behind Archer in this matchup, even at a cheaper price tag. No, no thanks. I'm all set with that price. Maybe if he was Clay Buckholt's price, I would be firing him in in cash. But, uh, uh, yeah, I, it's just too tough to go against the Red Sox. Even even with Vegas sort of saying, you know, Archer's going to have a good start and everything, I, I don't care. The one through eight, one through nine is just lethal right now, and I, I don't want to deal with Sandy Leone ruining my pitcher. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, Sandy Lone is just, you know, <laughs> uh, the second coming of, of Mike Piazza behind the plate, so. Um, and as far as Clay Buckholtz goes, I mean, Min Price on, on uh, DK here, but we've seen this show before. Yeah, we have. And no. Uh, no. because the price is so cheap, I – I, he's coming off a pretty solid start against the Tigers, uh, a Tigers offense that's in the top half of the league in in Wobb against Friday. He's obviously a strong lineup. Uh, didn't get the win, which was unfortunate, but I don't know. This Rays offense against righties really isn't that great. Uh, middle of the road, I mean, still relatively high uh, strikeout rate, 23.7% in Tropicana. For Bear Min in, in a tournament play, I, I can see pairing him with a high upside guy like Arietta or another high upside arm that can rack up a ton of strikeouts and stacking some big offenses in there with them it's just solely a gpp move that i'm not going to roll out and it's one of those ones where it's like okay if i'm making 10 lives one or two of those might be a buckle slam that i'm just stacking bats in jason do you need to talk that's no okay. I, we can I, stop the pot if you need to talk that's okay it's nice. I mean, it's nice to think you could pair Ariad up with a Buckholz and still have over forty or, or still have over four thousand left per bat. I I don't disagree. Um, I just. Oh yeah, it's a completely volatile move. It's a complete GPP move. Am I? It it's probably it's going to pan out more times, or it's not going to pan out more times than not. But if you do hit on it, and and you do get the right bats in there with you, uh, and, and those guys, I mean. That that is something that could pay off. No, you're not wrong. I just I just can't do Buckholtz after what I've seen from him this year. Obviously, this is a in theory this is a good matchup for the price. So I, I don't disagree. Yeah, no, I I can definitely see. It's more of just a personal thing I might do. If <laughs> right. you wanted, if you want to hop on the train with me, go down the tracks. Sure, join Jason, me. Jason, Jason's going to get ice cream. If you're on a diet, you don't have to go, but he's gonna go. So if you want to go, the offer's there. Yeah, and there's no there's no judgment. That's yeah. the thing. It's a no judgment right. zone. You get all the hot fudge and the peanut butter outer casing thing. You know, you can yeah. do all, all all you want, man. And or you could get to the stand and and come away, and it just tilts over. It just falls right on the sidewalk, and that's could be what Buckholz oh. does in the fourth inning. Oh man, that's yeah. Some kid smacks it out of your hand, says "loser." I, yeah, yeah, and, and then like playing. your life, your life turns gray, and like everyone's like mean to you, and. Yeah, that's exactly what could happen. That's certainly what Clay Buchholz has done to us lately. <laughs> uh, Rangers and Reds, uh, Derek Collins versus Dan Straley in Great American Ballpark. Um, no. Both these arms, yeah, I, that sums it up. I mean, Holland's a cheap guy, but I'm not really looking to use against this Reds offense, who obviously hit a little bit better at home. They're still not great against lefties, but um, I, I I can stay away from Holland. And in Straley, I, I actually kind of like stacking against Straley tonight. I think he's been a little bit uh a little bit lucky this season I, I think there's bound for some regression yeah i don't i don't think straley's a bad pitcher but just in this ballpark with these underpriced bats um you're gonna be looking to go the other way here yeah i think so i i don't think on this slate in terms of the guys around straley uh you know we talked about musgrove we'll talk about john gray i, I like those guys better ventura even you you can make a case for more so just because yeah. they're in better spots and better ballparks mm -hmm. uh royals and marlins next here you got andrew cash versus your donna ventura um ventura intriguing gpp guy i mean not a favorite but on the road here um obviously i do like al pitchers going to the nl um, ballparks and, and obviously losing the DH is always nice. Uh, Ventura has been a guy who's been a little bit up and down this season, um, but has been pitching pretty well of late. Um, obviously had one rough start um, uh, against Texas, but overall hasn't really been getting crushed. For the price in the matchup against the Marlins, I, I don't mind him. 
Yeah, I don't I don't mind him either. I kind of like him actually. Um definitely going to be getting some exposure in tournaments. I don't know about cash, but I mean throughout the day I might talk myself into it. Um 8100 versus a struggling Marlins team. Really all you have to worry about is Christian Yelich and whether he's going to hit a homer against your righty or not. Um D Gordon has been okay. Obviously he hasn't been hitting value of late. Obviously another guy you have to worry about, but the rest of that lineup, I mean, against righties is just really bad. So um, I, I like him quite a bit. I think he has a lot of upside in this matchup, as you mentioned, losing the DH, going to the NL. So 8100 is a really nice price for him, I think. Yeah, I think so. And I think we're speaking more to DraftKings with him. I, I mean, For me, at least in, on FanDuel, I mean, we have Jaime Garcia, John Gray, Carlsford Down, all right in that range as far as 8300 goes. Yeah. He, he dropped... A lot of 8,300s on this slate. <laughs> he, he ranks a little bit below those other guys for me on FanDuel, but I, I certainly draft because he's certainly a reasonable option. I think one, because it's two pitchers. If you wanted to roll two cheaper arms, I'm okay with that in tournaments as well. Yeah, right. On FanDuel, um, going to be tough for Ventura to sort of hit the high expectations we need for tonight. Yeah, definitely. And, and Andrew Kashner on the other side, I'm not really looking to use him. I know this Royals offense isn't great, but uh, they are playing well of late. Um, I'm just... Casher's not a guy I really need to dive into. Agreed. Uh, Phillies and White Sox here next. Carlos Radon versus Jake Thompson. Um, Radon's certainly an intriguing option. I think he's one of those ones who uh, is going to be a, a pretty popular GPP play. I mean, home favorite there, minus 163 uh, favorite. Uh, obviously, the ballpark is certainly still a downgrade. Um, but you look at Radon – He's a guy who who does have some strikeout upside in this matchup. He's been pitching pretty pretty well uh, of late. You look at this Phillies offense. I mean, obviously against lefties they've been horrible. I mean, twenty three percent strikeout rate, twenty eighth in WOBA. I, I don't mind Redone for that price. I think there's a lot of upside there. Uh, I agree. Um, I think he is a solid tournament play. I just think this might be a night where I I sort of sprinkle in some Phillies one-offs like Tommy Joseph and and Michael Franco at their prices, at least um, on DK. So I I don't know. Overall, I I don't mind it. I kind of like it, but I, I do like the other options better at his price. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, obviously, Redone's not the most consistent arm, and, and the Phillies have shown to get to you know pretty much any pitcher this season. We've we've seen them get to the the worst and to the best of the guys. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Jake Thompson on the other side, he's a guy I'm not really looking to use. Um, he doesn't show any real stuff at the major league level that has me in any way in, intrigued. Um, so I think he's an easy fade. Yep, agreed. Um, might be a night for for the bully Justin Moore now. <laughs> Could be. Could be some locker shoving time. <laughs> uh, Tigers and Twins next here. Anibal Sanchez versus Kyle Gibson. Uh, Sanchez has kind of been turning things around of late. Um, I mean, he is a guy who who has shown some strikeout upside uh, of late. I mean, um, in his last about six or seven starts, he's, he's shown double-digit strikeout upside twice, uh, coming off an, an eight-strikeout start against uh, Kansas City, where he nearly allowed or was going for a, a no hitter there late into the game. Um, the swinging strike rate certainly improved. I, I think he's just, he's an intriguing GPP option at his still cheap price tag against his Twins offense that that does strike out quite a bit. Yeah, again, I don't disagree um, with his price. It's sort of kind of like Radon for me, where I think there is quite a bit of upside, but I also think there's quite a bit of downside as well with some of the the one offs and lefties in this lineup. You know who I'm looking at batting in the five spot, so. Um, I, I am a little worried about some of the lefties in that Twins lineup, but overall, yeah, it is a nice GPP play. Yeah, definitely. And yeah, I mean, as you noted, the floor is certainly lower, which is, you know, that's where the risk is, and that's why it's not cash game play for guys like Radon and and, uh, and Sanchez there. But as far mm-hmm. as GPPs go, I mean, they're cheap, and there is a lot of upside. Yep. Uh, Kyle Gibson. Kyle Gibson's not a guy I'm really looking to use. I mean, has always really struggled against Detroit. Um, kind of just your average right-hander uh, in that ballpark. I mean, obviously, it's pretty neutral this time of year. Uh, I'm, Gibson's a guy I don't need to go into. Agreed. Yeah. Not not worth it on a 15-gamer. No, it definitely isn't. Uh, Rockies and Brewers next year. John Gravers, Chase Anderson, and the the wheels have kind of come off the John Gray train of late. Um, I mean, he's, he's really struggled his last three starts. Um, obviously, two were at home. One was on the road against the Phillies, which was kind of surprising. 
I like them here a lot for a rebound game. Uh, I think there is a ton of upside, but as we've seen, the the floor is very low. But this Brewers offense against right-handed pitching, 25.4% strikeout rate. Gray is certainly uh, going to be an appealing GPP option just due to that number right there. Can can we get John Gray in a good pitcher's park, please? This man needs a good pitcher's park. Um, now, obviously um, – we don't love this park for park factors, but I, I love this matchup, especially with price included. Great tournament play. Um, obviously, I, I still think Gray is a good pitcher. Um, so I, I think this is a great matchup. I'm not really worried about all the righties in this lineup. So I'm firing away. Yeah, no, I, I am too. I think it's it's a solid solid chance at a, at a win here. I, I'm not really looking to use Chase Anderson. I know this Rockies team on the road is still not that great, but uh, mm-hmm. and even though obviously a lot of these guys come from the left side, if Blackman's in the lineup, Chase Anderson is a reverse splits guy, but still pretty average against lefties as well. So uh, I, I'm digging that Arenado price at 4,500, um, and, and I think he's going to be a, a monster on tonight's slate. I think yeah, that's going to be nice and chalky for us. Poor Chase. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, Mets and Cardinals next year. Jaime Garcia versus John Neese. Uh, Cardinals, big home favorites, minus 170. Um, Jaime Garcia at a, at a nice mid-tier price. I mean, more expensive on DraftKings at 9,100, uh, which just still isn't that bad in comparison to the other top arms. Just 8,300 on FanDuel. Um, obviously, this Mets offense getting healthy. They're healthy again, uh, but still not a good team against lefties. And I, I'm, I'm with you. I know we were talking about Garcia a little bit before the show. He's He's a decent option tonight. He, yeah, he's my mid-range, cat, mid-range cash guy for tonight. I think if you want to fit in, especially on DK, um, if you want to fit in that Arietta or Bumgarner, who we'll get to, um, this is going to be one of the guys you're kind of looking at. You can't. I don't. I don't see a way where you pay up for Arietta and Bumgarner. So this is kind of your pay-down option. At least one of them. Um, I feel pretty confident about this matchup. That is to be said. Um, obviously, Jonas Cespedes is sitting there, but overall, I, I love this matchup. If the Mets keep hitting like they do um, or have in 2016, then it should be a good result. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, the Mets overall this year, I mean, against lefties, 22% strikeout rate, 317 Woba, which ranks 20th in the majors. Not a good not a good spot for, for this Mets team. I mean, they, they really have lacked on the offensive side. Right. Uh, as far as Nice goes, I know the Cardinals aren't good against lefties, uh, but Nice is not good overall. <laughs> so uh, Nice is an easy fade. Biscotti night. Oh, yeah. Yeah. How, how can you go wrong with Biscotti against uh, mm. a John Nice there? Love that last name. Biscotti. Yeah. Biscotti. Yeah. Uh, Braves and Diamondbacks next here. Rob Whalen versus Archie Bradley. Um, and given no. Bradley. Yes. Let's, let's just skip we, over. Let's just jump no. I, I like the Braves lefties bats in that one, which you if you're yeah. jumping on the, the uh, DK and FD pods with us, you'll see why. Yeah. Uh, Indians and A's next here. Sean Manea versus Danny Salazar. Um, Salazar super cheap. I mean, coming off the DL in his last start did not look good. No. Nope. Um, obviously, a matchup where he can certainly thrive in, especially a ballpark where he can certainly thrive in. Um, I'm just not quite sure if, if, if he's still right. So I, I'm staying away for the meantime. Like, it's one of those ones where I need to see – I need to see it first. You want to put him in there at that price. It's it looks delightful, but he just you can't trust it necessarily uh, in this matchup. We saw what Carrasco did yesterday to the A's, and I think I mean that's there for the taking. But I just don't think Salazar is necessarily healthy yet. So how much can we trust him? You know? Yeah, that's true. And and on the other side, uh, Mane has actually pitched really relatively well. I mean, in, com- in consideration to where he was early in the year, he's still giving up about three to four earned runs a game, still having troubles in home runs. Um, but obviously he has faced some good offenses. I mean, Texas, Seattle Cubs, Texas again. Um, it's just more of a one where I, I am staying away, but I'm not jumping all aboard Indians either. Right. So. Uh, Mariners and Yankees, Taiwan Walker versus CC Sabathia. Um, for me, I, I think this one's just kind of a stay away. I, I just feel like we've already talked about our favorite mid range guys, and these guys don't really fall into that filter. No, no, it's no, no, no way. All right, all right, we'll skip that one there. Absolutely not. Uh, Cubs and pa- Padres here, Jake Arrieta versus Christian Frederick, and uh, Cubs minus 240 favorites. They're on the road. Jake Arietta coming off uh, a start where he walked seven batters, which was a little odd. Um, and obviously he hasn't 
I feel like this year has not been the most consistent year for Arietta. Even though he has a, an under three RA, I, I haven't found myself using him much lately. I mean, especially more in the second half, he hasn't been tremendous. Um, but this is a matchup against the Padres in a, in a pitcher friendly ballpark. There is a lot of upside. He is a safe start here. He's had quite a few non, not Jake Arietta starts. Um, especially in the last month or so. He really only had one big game against the Pirates, who, as we've seen of late, just get shut down by everyone. Um, so I, anytime I get a chance to shout them out, I will do it from now on. Um, but, I, I mean, in general, I just don't see how you can fade in this matchup. It's just they have no shot, honestly. Yeah. Right? I don't they see just it have no shot. I, they just have no shot. I'm sorry, Padres and Padres fans, all ha- point five of you that watch. <laughs> yeah, I, I think so. I mean, you look at this Padres offense against righties. I mean, near a 25 percent strikeout rate. Did last in Woba. Um, this offense has certainly been trending downwards for a while now. So uh, it's certainly one where I'm just going to be staying away. Um, and on the other side, I mean, uh, Frederick is not a guy who I'm looking to use against this Cubs offense. Um, They've hit lefties pretty well. Frederick's an easy stay away. Absolutely. So, uh, next one here, you got Kenta Maeda and the Dodgers uh, taking on Madison Bumgarner um, and the Giants in Dodger Stadium. Um, Bumgarner has been a little bit up and down against the Padre or against the Dodgers this year, um, but this Dodgers team against lefties is really horrendous. I mean, 29th and Wobo, when half their team kind of either gets platooned out or just has to take it from the left side against Bumgarner. Um, it is. It can be a little bit rocky. For me, Bumgarner is just solely a GPP play. Um, I'd rather go Arietta if I'm if I am going cash, um, or or pay down. Interesting. Um, I I still think Bumgarner is a cash option. It obviously just is unreasonably expensive. So that's obviously something you have to deal with. But I like this matchup. I think my eight is kind of kind of a sneaky play here at nine um, on DK. Uh, as a as a tournament guy, I don't think many people are going to be on him just with the way the slate shaked out and with the sort of the low probability of a win. I I think there's a pretty decent start. Stop the a pretty decent chance he has a quality start here. Yeah, I definitely think so too. And and I, I I'm with you. I think more on the on DraftKings he's in play. And yeah. and the one thing I, I I think more both of these guys are actually more so in play on DraftKings. Um, one because I. I I could actually see a possibility where actually maybe neither of them even get the win. Yeah. Um, it's just, I, I do think it's going to be one of the lower scoring games and it could turn into just maybe from seventh or eighth on, it's going to be the bullpen who kind of might be the deciding factor in that one. Yeah. I could see like a two to one game, honestly. Yeah. So that, that's something that bodes well for trackings, but FanDuel where, where you need that extra 12 points maybe to, especially at those prices where you want it. Um, it's not quite there for me. Right. So that's going to wrap things up with the pitcher nail down. Be sure to check out DaveFantasyCafe.com for all great tools and content.